Welcome back to Grand America Outlawed, guys. Coming at you this week with a uh, carbon carb off report on the carbon tax and whether or not we're going to get the government out tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? Could be a crazy day. And it's. I hope, I hope you don't have all those clips from the, the question and answer period in Canada, do you? Or Which one? I don't know. I saw a bunch going around with uh, Pierre and Trudeau arguing about the carbon tax and he, Trudeau keeps calling it a rebate over and over. It's just, I can't even listen to that. I can't handle it. Well, the, you got to play that stuff. So because no, I, I don't think, I, most people don't understand that. this I is can't, what it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's like a boring you though. I don't, it's not for you. It's for the listeners that are like, just, what is going on? How, can you get away? how can you get away with just not saying anything or with, with lying? How can he get away with lying? I don't know if I have that though. I have some like some older stuff, some blast from the past stuff that seems to be uh, coming back up around again. And I have, of course, carbon tax stuff. Well, that that was about carbon tax, so that, that's why I, I mentioned it. It's always kind of about carbon tax yeah. <clears throat> these days, I guess. So I've kind of just got like I've got some stuff about Canadians in general. Some surveys that, that are sort of good news for us, and then some stuff that's pretty disappointing too. Some clips about reactions from from Canadians that are sort of disappointing. So, which ones though? Where are they from? They're from like pol political political things. Both of them are for like polit from like political things. Yeah, but what part of Canada are they from? Oh, like well, I don't know. One's from BC. I don't know where the other one's from. Well, let's. Uh, well, BC is. BC's lost. I can't remember. Oh, no. I don't want to start with this one. Okay. Let's start with this one because I think uh, let's start, we'll start on the light side of things. This is, yeah, yeah. This is sort of unrelated to anything. It's just, a, I think it's a pretty good glimpse of where the Canadian government is at right now. Um, actually, you know what? I, I should let me zoom out of this for a sec before I do that. Um, this is Finance Minister Christia Freeland uh, in response to her economic update Tuesday that she launched a year ago that will be uh, seven, seven to 15 billion dollars set aside for contracts. Um, Approximately seven to 15? Seven to 15 billion dollars set aside for contracts, some of which, interestingly enough, can I guess, have already been awarded. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, uh, what do you want to guess? What do you want to guess? I want to guess uh, some of the contracts for for um, Pan Canadian Health Data. Well, I'll, uh, you're not going to know. I mean, this is the uh, this is a this is the funny thing about the clip is it just like the complete lack of accountability it is a little. Uh, it's a little spiced up from one world domination youtube channel i couldn't find it without the spice but the the uh the spice actually makes it a little funny so uh you know maybe we'll enjoy it and we can we can stop this whenever you want but as this it is pretty telling to just kind of let it go for a little bit because he doesn't get an answer like ever at, at any point from the <laughs> From the people that are supposed to, and it's not like the regular questions thing, right? Where we just go around, we don't really say, eh, 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 and they just, because questions period isn't answers period. There's no, I don't think there's any rule in there that says you have to answer the question. I mean, actually, that's a great would. point. If I was in there, you know, answers period. I mean, <laughs> if I was in there, I couldn't help but answer the question. You know, I was just like, that would be ideal. I feel like that. I feel like that's the way it was set up. And he's supposed to like have some debate, not just keep spouting off. And I feel like one side kind of has some debate or might do some debate if they could get something out of the other side. But let's just play this little clip here about this seven billion dollars. Now, I'd like to uh, to welcome our witnesses uh, from the Ministry of Finance. We will have with us. Uh... How is the government paying the seven billion dollar bill associated with this proposal? This looks pretty old, eh? Is this old? No. Oh. That question is directed to who, Mr. Poliev? Anyone who wants to answer it. If they 
have one anyone over there that is concerned about where the money comes from that person could speak up maybe you could choose one of the witnesses <laughs> i don't know who uh, on their side uh, is responsible for this but clearly they're getting the money from somewhere so they must know where Anyone here from Finance Canada? Let's see, Mr. Baylor. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I, I, I can provide a, uh, a high-level uh, response, but uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to uh, to answer uh, directly uh, the honourable member's uh, uh, question uh, be, be, because we're we're here to to discuss this, and and I can say uh, with regards to the cost of the measures uh, in terms of, of Part One. Um, the, the three first programs that, that I, uh, I mentioned, the, the hospitality, the tourism and hospitality recovery program, part and businesses recovery program, uh, and the local lockdown program have a cost of three point two billion. And, and where's and, sorry, sorry, Mr. Mr. Baylor, where's the money coming from? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, that that is uh, within the, the government's uh, broader macro uh, economic framework, and, and I'm not, I, I'm not. Uh, I respond. I, I can't. I can't speak to that. Uh, Who do you think you speak to? It. You're muted. Sorry, Freeland. Well, I don't think we get much out of her either. Unfortunately, um, I really don't think we would. I got. Did you catch this uh, on that same vein? Did you catch this, Polivier little? I mean, he he is like Trump in a lot of ways. You know, I do get there's a Trumpness to it, but he's been in politics his entire life since he was like 20 years old. So he's not he's not like Trump in that regard. He's like in some ways the ultimate swamp creature, or maybe it's like the Kennedy, where he's like maybe the guy that can go in there and maybe actually get things done. But he is a troll, and it's kind of funny. So you've probably seen this already, but for for the people that haven't, I've seen it's definitely been going around. It's only 50 seconds, though, and it's just kind of a nice little progression of events of the last eight years of Justin Trudeau. I don't even think it's last really eight. I think, yeah, I think this is a little mashup of Justin over the last like five years, I think. It does require putting a price on things right now so that we can set ourselves up for success in the future. <laughs> Easy thing. He almost said failure. Politicians, short-term thinker politicians, interest rates are at historic lows, Glenn. You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. If you use your credit card to go back to school, or if you use your credit card, uh, you, you go into debt to uh, build an expansion on your house uh, that you're then going to be able to uh, sell your house for more. If you're making investments that are going to return, that is how you grow a strong economy. And the budget will balance itself. Oh, that's Pierre's That's Pierre's line. This is, yeah, yeah, this is Pierre's actually, his YouTube channel. He's got... Uh, you know what the telling thing is? He's got, I think, a half million YouTube subscribers. And Jug Meat has 5,099. <laughs> Less than us. <laughs> because they can't, I don't know. It's not the same. Pla it's not like, hey, we were talking about the other night about the difference between the right and left being able to handle long form media. Right, one's been one's been supported by the mainstream for so long that they, it's not their thing, right? Your boy is speaking of which, uh, not your boy, but uh, Pierre is on now. He's on. Uh, I noticed right before we started that he just came out on Peterson. So that's. Uh, you gonna go over and listen to him or? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do that or if I'll get that far, but it's, he's doing the long form. I Honestly, I never even listened to the Daniel Smith on Peterson, but just the fact that they'll do it. I mean, That's Trudeau cool. went on that long form thing in France and accidentally came out and said he doesn't want to be the prime minister really anymore, and he thinks about quitting every day. I mean... And the last time I, he did that one in French, or not the last time, but the other time he did one in French, remember he was like, 
saying, how do we segregate those people? Basically, it's very sort of Nazi-ish talk when it got translated, right? Remember? How, yeah, yeah. How much more demoralizing could it be than just like, you know, if you're like the leader of the, not saying he's my leader, but if you're the leader, shouldn't you be like up to it? Want, shouldn't you want to do it? You shouldn't be like, I think like quitting every day. Can you imagine if you just go into your job and your boss just like, I fucking hate it here. I think I feel like quitting every day. And just like, you know, eventually nobody wants to work there. I've worked with guys like this. Nobody yeah. wants to work with them. Exactly. Anyway, I don't know if you want to do something. I got some carbon tax stuff I can do, how it's affecting Indians. Uh, Trudeau fighting with his stuff. I have a thing on the breakdown of the Canadian parliamentary system and this non-confidence thing that's happening tomorrow. I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but there's a chance. I'd say there's a 10% chance or maybe even a 15% chance that it could happen because there's a few different things that that could swing. There's a few people that maybe don't care and could look at it as just getting out early and the NDP's got some real decisions to make because right now they're sort of tanking alongside the liberals. They're being viewed as the same party as the liberals. So, you know, his best chance might be to just draw a line in the sand right now and say, I'm opposing this government and calling an election too. And then maybe he gets his seat again and gain some seats over the liberals. Because right now they're, they're all just going to the, to the conservatives because the other two are the same thing. At least that's yeah, it's interesting how the provinces are completely not that though. The, the provinces on their own are not like BC is uh, like, I've got a clip to play later about the BC one about the NDP, just keeping all the seats in BC and the conservative. Well, I mean, seven premiers have come out against carbon tax out of how many? Because BC's not in there. BC don't count. Well, here's a, here's a... Quebec doesn't count. BC and Quebec don't count. So how many does that leave left? So the seven have come out, and those two don't count because they don't have the carbon tax, right? BC has their own. So if you have your own in place, you don't have to do the federal one. And I think Quebec's the same deal. I don't know 100%. It doesn't that. leave a lot left. No, that's that's what I'm saying, right? I mean, if we count them, if we so we take those two off the table, those two are off the table. So you got Alberta, obviously, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, that's four. Um, Newfoundland, five, New Brunswick, six, Nova Scotia, seven. That leaves what Prince Edward Island. I might be have some of those mixed up on whether. Who's who? I was just doing them in that order to count the provinces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You basically, if you take those two out, that probably they obviously do support the carbon tax because I don't know if there's anybody their own system, but if they weren't, if they didn't have their own system in place, they'd probably just join in with the others because why not? It's just an easy, it's an easy boogeyman. It's an easy, I mean, I've got a bunch of the the um testimony the actual testimony from the the pbo the pb the the prime minister budgeter or whatever you know the like the the, the budgeter the chief budgeting people at i've got her her his his testimony saying that it costs us all money it costs us the people money or yeah yeah, yeah yeah and i was gonna go dig into who appointed him but i'm pretty sure he'd be you know a liberal you know he's well, gonna be Trudeau didn't hire like Harper's guy to do the job or, you know, Olivier's buddy. Well, the weird thing was when I was mentioning about the, the question and answer when they're talking about the carbon tax and they're, you know, I was watching a guy's YouTube video and he was, he was playing quite a bit of it. And they kept saying that um, the carbon, the rebate is more than, and they use this weird term, like the fuel consumption or your fuel cost. So they were, they were, saying that the rebate is more and they kept using the same terminology, but it wasn't about your total carbon tax. It was only about the fuel surcharge or the, the fuel fiscal. Surcharge. That's what they call it is the fiscal and the fiscal is just your home eating and your car. I know, but they used fuel this time. So maybe they realized that it's not even going to match the fiscal. So now they have to call it fuel. Well, it's uh, supposedly it matches the fuel. And if I look at mine, it's, I guess it's kind of close. 
So between Shauna and I, I guess on the new rural thing, we're supposed to get twenty one hundred a year, and my gas is costing me about. I mean, if you, if I can't, it definitely it's not covering. It's not covering my fuel and my home heat, but that'll probably cover about my home heat. It might cover my almost my extra fuel toss and my home heat because I won't heat my home for three or four months in the summer. But it's definitely so. But my point being that at best, it's breaking even on those two things. It's not covering anything else at all. It might cover the extra 15 cents a liter on fuel. Which for this my is, truck would be about fifteen bucks a tank. This is the this is what the difference between what you pay and what you get back. Yes, because I'm a rural, so rural gets an extra twenty percent, but that's not official yet. That hasn't passed. That's just like uh, it hasn't got royal assent yet. It's in, this is infuriating. All for a tax is going towards this climate change. They're just really doubling down on the whole the whole thing. You know, saying that. Uh, yeah, well, it seems they're like they're gonna stop the. They're gonna stop climate change. Like this is what they're saying. How can you? You we can't just pause climate change unless we tax you. Then we can stop it. They they just say it in the same breath that they can't pause it, but they want to stop it. Yeah, well, it's weird because it's almost like even if they're right and it is revenue neutral for the government, it's still costing us a quarter billion to to administer administer and and causing a bunch of inflation and it's transferring wealth it's it's bringing us all down to the same level it it, it really it's i see i don't know that it's really doing that so much i don't i'm not looking at it so much as a wealth transfer i don't think it's really doing it. i just think it's you're right about one thing it is driving us all down to the same level because it's driving the cost of everything so high that we're all going to be broke but there's not enough money moving around really to call it you well, know so oh, most of the poorest people are only getting like 800 bucks a year you know i know I mean? but it's still but that's the way it's maybe that's the way it starts or that's enough that i mean it is enough to make a difference i mean when the, you're paying child you're tax paying, credit is a way bigger wealth transfer than that Right. Well, and so disability too. So when yeah. I'm looking, if I'm looking after somebody that's disabled, if I make over something like 4,000 a month or 4,300, which isn't a lot. Then you're better off pushing them down the stairs. And then, then, then I don't get anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's infuriating. Plus you got to sp spend more money to, to help them. I mean, it's, it's, they just don't want you succeeding. It seems. They didn't know. Well, of course not. Of course not. So we can stop this again whenever you want, but this is for people that have just, because a lot of people talking about it, we've heard us talk about it, um, but this is sort of right from the horse's mouth on how much the carbon tax is costing Canadians from the guy who should know. Um, so here we go. Carbon tax looming, carbon tax hike that the Prime Minister is planning for April 1st. Uh, you did a comprehensive study of the carbon tax, and uh, uh, but you not only looked at the direct cost, uh, you, you looked at the total cost. The On page three of the report, it says, uh, household net cost of the federal fuel charge, fiscal and economic impacts. I'm sure there's lots of Canadians that are following this very closely because they know how high prices are and they're afraid of how high they're going to jump April 1st. But can you just explain what that means, fiscal and economic impacts? So the fiscal impact is the impact of paying the tax directly. For example, filling up the gas tank, uh, gas to heat the home, the indirect costs. So this is Yves Giraud, the parliamentary budget officer. Eaves. For example, if Eaves. you buy a service or goods, there's an energy component embedded, plus the GST that's applied to that tax. So that's the fiscal cost. The government sends a check or a rebate. So the fiscal impact is the difference between what you pay, indirect and direct, minus the rebate. And on that front, 80%, we estimate 80% of households get more than what they pay. Can you when stop it? We include the economic impact. So this is, so we, you and I were discussing this, but he says that it's all in there. So the fuel and the heat in your home and all that is direct and indirect. It's all that cost to you, direct and indirect is fiscal. 
Yeah, so, that's fiscal. So, and, and they say that 80%. No, no, that's not the indirect. That's just the direct. No, no, no. No, go back. Just go back. Because he's about to talk about the, in, no, the indirect. No, we're going to talk, talk about the economy, the economic. Which is the inflation. Yeah, just just go back about 30 seconds. Embedded, plus the GST that's applied to that tax. Yeah. Indirect cost. Yeah, that's fine. So, for example, to heat the home. The indirect costs. So, for example, if you buy a service or goods, there's an energy component embedded, plus the GST that's applied to that tax. So that's the fiscal cost. The government sends a check or a rebate. So the fiscal impact is the difference between what you pay, indirect and direct, minus the rebate. And on that front, 80%, we estimate 80%. He does it indirect and direct. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're including it both. In the fiscal, so that's so that's what, why what, he separated out fuel because. Let's keep going then and see what yeah, he's talking about. He says it will be eighty percent. Yeah, of households get more than what they pay. Eighty percent of the households get more. More eighty yeah, percent yeah, of the yeah, households stop, get stop. more back than what they pay. Yeah, I mean that's unbelievable. Just wait. Just wait. He's not done. Economic impacts. That's taking into account the fact that some sectors will be negatively affected by the carbon tax. For example, the transportation sector, the oil and gas sector is an obvious example. They'll be presumably negatively affected by a carbon tax that progressively increases. So when we take also that into account, we find that households will have lower employment in some sectors, lower investment income. And we find that it's the opposite. Once you take into account the fiscal and economic impact, the changes in the economic fabric of the country that uh, households are seeing a negative impact uh, from the carbon tax when including both the amounts that they pay but also the economic the economic impact on households so so in other words the fiscal impacts are where the tax is applied directly so when i see that on my fuel bill when i fill up my car if i see that on my heating bill that Andrew Shear is going to clarify it here because this dude is a French motherfucker and he's like he's trying to speak English as a second language. I think that might be causing some of the problems. I, like, I, I was going to compliment him on his speaking. I thought oh, he was very clear about it all. Well, let's see what Shear says because Shear is going to clarify some things and that's let's see where we end up. So, so in other words, the fiscal impacts are where the tax is applied directly. So when I see that on my fuel bill when i fill up my car if i see that my heating bill that's the, the the direct cost and the rebate was only built around capturing that cost but what you're saying today is that all the other cascading effects of the carbon tax increase will have a cost to canadians yes there's an adjustment in the economy that's expected to take place by reducing our use of fossil fuels and that will have impacts certainly in the short term while the economy adjusts and that impacts increases costs for example of transportation companies which presumably will have lower profits that they will redistribute less of to shareholders for example and and higher costs that get passed here's the problem with that and andrew's going to carry on with that here in a minute and he's going to pull on it but that's not what's going to happen i mean and what <laughs> what what precedent do we have for people to say oh, well, i'll just take the hit i mean i'm not doing that you know, I, I, I help run a company by day that has to take these sort of things into account. And with carbon tax is one of them now, one of them. And it's 8%. It's an 8% thing that we have to add on to. 8%? Depending, well, it, ch it changes, right? But if it's, if we're using trucks, if we're using trucks That's and crazy. lifts, if we're using trucks and lifts to go like put up a warehouse or something like that, yeah. we're going to be burning fuel all day. It's 8%. You got to add 8% onto onto your bid to cover the carbon tax and that's what the crane company is charging me the crane company companies all the big crane companies have an eight percent of that dude that was last i haven't seen a big crane invoice from one of these big companies since like last april so i mean i guess we'll see what it is now because it might have gone up at some point in between there as well so it might be higher now but now we're I'll be looking at you know just if it hasn't gone up that's going to go to ten percent so now on a to say a twenty-five thousand dollar crane invoice, which isn't a lot, doesn't get you far. Yeah. Uh twenty five hundred dollars in carbon tax. Oh, it's just this is infuriating. All for a fucking scam. I mean, I can't handle what it's for either. Like all right, let's keep going. Passed on to consumers. 
So, so that's a factor passed on to consumers. So to that's his point story. there, where the liberals, this guy's a uh, liberal point, he always, uh, are expecting that this is going to be lower profits for the shareholders and it's going to take the hit, but that's not what's happening across every sector. So for, from my our perspective right from the company that i help run we can't afford it we just you know most companies in our position can't afford to take the hit because it's already hard enough to run a business in canada so it's not like i mean i'm sure there are some companies some billion dollar companies that could afford it and they just don't want to but most of the country is run by companies the same size as the one i'm a part of and they can't afford to take a 10% hit on everything. That That oh, is the margin. That's the margin. That's your, that's your margin. Yeah, that's what you're left with. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. With everything up the way it is now, your margin is probably more like six, five. Example. And and higher costs that get passed on to consumers. So so that's a factor, too, in the economic cost, too. It's the indirect kind of cascading effects as a trucker has to pay his share of the carbon tax that that has to be accounted for somewhere. So with either higher prices, as you say, either lower wages or or lower uh, uh, profits back to shareholders. Okay. And with that in mind, the majority of Canadians are are, are the majority of Canadians better off or worse off even after you factor in the the rebate. Well, once you factor in the rebate, but also the economic impacts, based on our modeling, the majority of households will see a, a negative impact as a result of the carbon tax. Okay, and you've broken down in, in this chart uh, what are called quintiles. But uh, the, the, for, for those that might not be familiar with that with with that word, that basically means you take incomes and you divide them into five groups from hi highest to lowest. Is, is that right? So the, from the highest is quintile one, and the highest we can call them MPs, but we call them quintile five. That's a joke. That's probably far enough with that. Yeah, we went through all that quintile a couple of weeks ago. I mean. You 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 went through that chart with us. Yeah, exactly. I've gone. I just don't get so. I wanted them to hear it from the PBO, you know, not from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe misinterpreting it. This is then, this is the guy. This if we're all getting money, if eighty percent of us are getting more money back, who's who's where's who's paying for it then? Where's we're it all not, getting? We're not. He just yeah. said we're not. Eighty percent of us are losing money. Is what he just said. Who said that? That dude, the chief, the PBO just said that. The, the chief budgetary officer just said, as soon as you factor in all the economic stuff, it reverses. 80% of people are losing money. I know, but the point is, like, even though they, they keep, they, are you, you, they're not saying that in the question and answer period. They're saying that, you, you, you know, you're getting more than your fuel charges back. You're getting more back. So who's paying? Which who is probably true. Pay? Which is probably true they, if you don't factor in any of the economic side of things. Who do they think is paying for it, though, then? I don't understand who are they. Do they are they getting it from the economic side? Is that what they're well, pointing? Because I'm probably overpaying, especially we're, we're, people like me who are right on the cusp. You know, where I'm not, where I'm just like, you know, that's where the wealth. Yeah, that's where the wealth transfer comes. So in. I get to pay a thousand bucks a month for my energy, so that someone in the city in a tiny little apartment, because you know I'm paying a lot. Obviously, I, I I'm elected for a lifestyle that I guess they're saying has a large carbon footprint. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if I lived in a condo downtown, like, you know, by, by contrast, Shauna's bill was, you know, like 110 bucks a month for everything. Mine's here. Our bill is 10 times that because we have a, I guess a larger carbon footprint because I don't know. I honestly don't know how that would be the case. We're using a little more electricity, I guess a little more natural gas to heat, but ain't I just like paying for the extra natural? I, I, it's dude, this is, it's all a big Ponzi scheme, man. It's, it's just like one day we got to get into the CPP too and the Ponzi scheme and that is, but let's, let me, let me move on. And I guess to some stuff that I, I wanted to talk about some. Poll. Wait, wait, no, I'm not. I still oh, got it. Okay, okay. I'm not done. I still got, because we haven't even, it's been a crazy week in Canada. It's like a crazy, it's it's all coming apart because this is what we're talking about. We're just about every single premier in the country. And it's not just that. Now, like, uh, so all of the Nova Scotia people, all the, every party, the Liberals, the Conservatives, and the NDP, but on the provincial level, voted unanimous, unanimous, unanimously for a motion that the fucking MPs, the Liberal MPs in Nova Scotia said vote 
the way the constituents want, which is against the carbon tax. And they tried to bring it up. They tried to ask that guy specifically a question in Parliament, and Trudeau and his buddy would not let Buddy talk. Oh, they had someone else talk for him. Do you have, do you have that? Is that I good? have that? But first, I want to play. This is, you got the king's, because, you got the king's, uh, the king's thing. I have all this. I have a bunch of stuff we have to get okay. to because I think it's important. I mean, if we're doing uh, this, is like the, a big important. This probably between the carbon tax and the arrive can. That is, I think, the two biggest things that are teetering the thing. And and I'm also going to bring up, I've got the SNC thing, which is bubbling back to the surface, which happened five years ago, but it's all coming back around now because they've been trying. The prediction was like a week ago. So I've missed the date, but I'm not going to miss it by much. It could happen tomorrow. It could, well, no, it wouldn't happen tomorrow, but it would happen quickly after tomorrow, I guess, right? Anyway. I want you to listen to this and tell me if you don't think this is exactly what a politician's job is. Earlier this week, you called premiers who want to end the carbon tax short-term thinkers. Is the liberal <laughs> premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Andrew Fury, one of those short-term thinkers? I think a lot of people are seeing the public pressure of folks who... Uh, are worried about the cost of living and worried about affordability. And one of the challenges that is out there is that everyone seems to be talking about the price we've brought in on pollution. Nobody is talking about the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 families across the country <laughs> than the price on pollution actually costs them. So I can't stand this house on pollution or it's not working if it helps at all. It's just it's not landing or uh, leveling it off where it is would actually mean less money in the pockets of eight out of 10 Canadians uh, in the jurisdictions where it's imposed, which doesn't make sense. Canadians are squeezed on groceries. They're squeezed on rent. They're squeezed on cost of living. We are putting more money in their pockets uh, four times a year with oh, the oh. rebate, and we're going to continue to do that. So what are you going to say to Mr. Fury, though, specifically? Do you think he's a short-term thinker? I think Mr. Fury is continuing to bow to political pressure. Uh, I think Canadians in Newfoundland and Labrador and right across the country expect their governments to do the right thing, and the right thing right now is not just fighting... So... Not just fighting climate change. Oh, but isn't the public pressure, isn't it, isn't like the public pressure the, isn't that his job? Yeah. To do what the public wants? Not what, not what the party thinks is right? Which is arguably what we're doing. So, all right, do you want me to play? I, I can play a little bit of this. I'll play a little bit of this and then we can. Okay. Yeah, keep going more. because you got, if you got it, it's all wrapping up in this nice little carbon tax thing, so. Yeah, which then is, yeah, all right, all right. So let's, where are we going to go next? I don't want to It doesn't matter how long this takes. Let's just do this properly. and then. Okay, let's go to this one next. Actually, yeah, because you just, you just talked about it. So I'll play, this is that clip of that little back and forth. A carbon tax hike of 23% will hit Nova Scotians especially hard. Uh, the Prime Minister's tax will cost $1,500 for the average Nova Scotia. I actually watched this live yesterday. It was either yesterday or the day before. I was in my truck just like cracking up. I mean, you can't help but laugh at it. Sorry to hear that. It's painful. They get back in rebates. That's why Nova Scotia's assembly passed a unanimous motion with all three parties supporting it, calling for federal MPs from that province to vote with Conservatives to spike the heck. One of those MPs is from King's Hans, the chair of the Agriculture Committee, which has been studying the carbon tax pain for farmers. So the question is for the chair of the Agriculture Committee, will he vote with us to spike the hike? Spike the hike. I like it. Oh. So Trudeau's not going to get up and they, fight his own uh, battles or what? They pause for a few minutes and then instead of that guy getting up, 
This dude gets up. Mr. Speaker, and look, what the honorable member is actually suggesting is false. We have real-world data to demonstrate in provinces where the system actually applies, families receive hundreds of dollars more each year than they pay in fuel charges. The conservatives pretend to there it is. affordability. There is one. They oppose measures to put more money in the pockets of... What's that? That's what I'm talking about. He's saying... He, so just oh, yeah. rewind that, like, 10 seconds. He's specifically saying all these rebates, more yeah, than they yeah. pay in fuel charges. Well, no shit, Sherlock. But, yeah, they're all lying. And they know they're lying. Testing is false. We have real-world data to demonstrate in provinces where the system actually applies, families receive hundreds of dollars more each year than they pay in fuel charges. The Conservatives pretend to care about affordability, yet they oppose measures to put more money in the pockets of families. They pretend to care about affordability, but they oppose measures that protect seniors' pensions. They pretend to care about affordability, but they vote against measures to remove the interest on Canada student loans. Mr. Speaker, we will do everything we can to make life more affordable, including putting more money in the pockets of families while we fight climate change at the same time. Come on, the honorable dude. leader of the opposition. Well, that parliamentary censorship proves everything you need to know. <laughs> everything else in this government. Right. I asked a question of the member Sorry. for King's Hands, the chair of the Agriculture Committee, who's now studying the painful impacts of the carbon tax, and the front bench here shut him down. Oh, told him to sit down and shut up. Because <laughs> So that's the, uh, yeah, they wouldn't let him talk. Buddy had uh, Pierre to ask him like four times in a row. And that, that other dude just kept getting up. And then Christina Freeland started getting up. And they're just, they they won't let him talk because I don't think they know what he's going to say. I think that's starting to get to that point, which is part of the reason I think that it could be, it could get interesting tomorrow. I mean, we're talking <laughs> And that's where the new media is so important because the mainstream media doesn't play this stuff for you, right? They've got a sanitized version of all this and they'll just skew it to whatever narrative they want. I mean, there is no real, besides rebel news, there's no real other sort of media that's going to play all this. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's kind of lame to go to all the MPs things in the house of commons, but that is the problem of what we're up against in Canada is it's like, it's got to get out. And, 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 and honestly, and the, there's a they, lot there's of only honest, two channels and they won't touch it, but I'm going to show you too, though, how brainwashed and how soft we still are as Canadians. I, I flip flop back and forth. I've got some, some polls that have good news to them, but then there's some, some examples of them just, oh, just go to move West. This is my, uh, this is my MP actually, the dude with the mustache. I have spoke with him like a half dozen times on the phone. Fighting about COVID measures. Well, he usually just agrees with everything and <laughs> doesn't do anything about it. Right. It's Member of Parliament Bob Zimmer today with colleague Martin Shields. Martin, how did your motion go today at Indigenous Northern Affairs Committee to axe the tax? I thought it was a well-worded motion. Yeah. When we worked at, we worked with other parties. We talked about the importance of the carbon tax and how it affects a lot of people in our country, but in particular those people, Indigenous Métis, who are really struggling and have come out and said this carbon tax is just doesn't work for us right. and we want it gone right and that's why we specifically said that especially with in, in indigenous northern affairs committee uh we want the carbon tax gone for all canadians make no mistake and that's what uh many committees are in uh, parliament are going to be uh, doing this week and there's going to be motions like ours and other committees now, the ndp and the liberals uh blocked your motion so we're going to try and uh spike that hike you bet. And that's the important part. We want the carbon tax gone for everybody. But we're on the Indigenous Northern Affairs Committee. Yeah, yeah. Right. And these are people that really pay a lot of money for a lot of things. Yeah. And especially that, in the North. Yeah. Especially in the North. And that's why we were focusing that motion here today in this committee. We're calling on the Liberal government to immediately yeah. cancel the 23% carbon tax increase <laughs> on April 1st, number one, and ax the tax for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis across Canada. Uh, I'm starting to, to think done. Still got to get it done, Martin, but keep yeah. it posted. I'm so the Indians that, are paying the carbon tax. I'm starting to think this is a distraction, though. I mean, you know, we've got a bunch of other stuff going on, and this carbon tax now is just taking over everything. It seems, you know. Meanwhile, there's there's injuries that they want to don't want to talk about excess deaths and increased cancer that they don't want to talk about. Oh, that's oh, never. No, we're never talking about that, dude. Were you kidding, kidding me? No, that'll be me and you, and you know. For the next 30 years just highlighting all this stuff and in the members section only so we don't get kicked <laughs> off of youtube i mean <laughs> i'm not naive enough to think that's ever going to change all right 
this will be my last clip on the matter. This is today uh, in the House of Congress. Not the House of Congress, she had the House of Commons. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost, with the Parliamentary Budget Officer testifying again that the majority of households will see a negative impact as a result of the carbon tax. End quote. Now he wants to hike the, the tax on April Fool's Day. We won't stand for it. So what will it be with this Prime Minister? Will he spike the hike or will he face a non-confidence vote at a carbon tax election? Yeah. The Parliamentary Budget Officer's report lays out clearly that eight out of ten Canadian families across the country where the price on pollution applies get more money back. I'm going to read again the testimony from the March 18th appearance of the parliamentary budget officer. Once you factor in the rebate, but also the economic impacts, the majority, the majority of households will see a negative impact as a result of the carbon tax. End quote. The prime minister plans to make this problem worse with a carbon tax hike on heat, on homes, on fuel, on food. We will not stand for it. So once again, which will it be? Will he spike the hike or will we have a carbon tax election? Yeah. What will it be, Mr. Speaker? It will be that Canadians get more money That's with right. the Canada carbon rebate. <laughs> He's going to say that Canada carbon rebate about four times. Taxes, then they will get back in rebates. He, there is a table showing that every single province in which this tax applies, the middle class families pay vastly more than they get back. And Canadians know it because under this prime minister, they've seen their food, their fuel, their homes, their heating go through the roof. But why don't we just end the debate and let Canadians decide and have a carbon tax election? All right, so that's my last carbon clap. Uh, carbon tax clip that just happened today and they're going to have a vote of non-confidence tomorrow so they'll vote tomorrow and if it if it passes somehow then um they have 45 days to have an election huh interesting i mean I there could be the there could be a uh, situation where they could just if there was like a vice whatever you know the like what christina freeland is that people have confidence in but they would have to vote that and you know if they vote out it's not that it's voting out the thing so um it's not supposed to pass um but i think you now we got rob in the chat saying that it will pass i think that for some reason i think there's a chance uh, that it's gonna, it's got a chance to pass too. You know, I said ten percent. It might even be, be more than that because the NDP is gonna make some decisions really quick. Uh, there's a bunch of like I didn't even play. Did you hear about so the Jugmeat passed that thing and made the Liberals vote to no longer supply Israel with arms? Um, yeah, I saw an interview with one of the with one of the Israel Israeli no one of the Zionist MPs, and he says he's a Zionist. And he's like, and he might go to the and like so this is the first time I've ever had to question the Parliament because they're all basically against him. Like it's it's very strange. Well, all the liberals are against him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess his definition of Zionist is just someone who thinks that uh, the Jews should have a homeland someplace. Yeah. Which maybe is fine. We just might disagree on where that might supposed where that place might supposed to be. So, um, I mean, I don't care where it is. To be perfectly honest, it seems like a lot of people disagree on where that. I'm not saying I disagree with anyone. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people disagree on where that place should be. So they just should stop fucking killing people over it. There's a bunch of empty space in the Ukraine. So, you know, just carve that bitch up. It's kind of shit. Anyway uh so that's my carbon tax stuff now i do have the snc stuff still but that could get pushed off till next week if we want it to um and i do well, have the parliament thing of canada we could show later on well, why don't we why don't we okay let well let's let's just wait with the snc and let, let me let me do some stuff that i've got ready here just to... so this is just like to test the water of uh of the Canadian. So there's a poll here, right? Legger just released the results of its latest poll done for the National Post. Have you heard about this one? 
The poll asked Canadians how they feel about the state of the nation. 70% of the voting age respondents said they agree with the statement that it feels like everything is broken in this country right now. So that's one poll. 70% of the voting age population says it feels like everything is broken right now. There's another thing that just came out. I'll show you this. I mean, we're going to get a little bit into this uh, other stuff here, these vaccines and stuff, unfortunately. But um, this is this Angus Reid Institute here. So this is very interesting. New data from the nonprofit Angus Reid Institute finds 7 in 10 Canadians, so 71% feeling the anti-vaccination movement is going to lead to unnecessary illness. Oh, hang on. That's Why did I... Feel that okay. This is a, yeah. This is kind of a misleading one, but it says uh, they feel that the anti-vax movement is going to lead to unnecessary illness and suffering in the population. But <clears throat> check this out. See that little graph on the right there. Twenty nineteen, four percent. I'm really against vaccinating my children. Now it's seventeen percent. It's gone up fourfold. I would vac. I would vaccinate my children without reservation. Went from eighty eight percent to sixty seven percent. So. <clears throat> Everything is shifting here. One in six parents of minors, 70%, say they are really against vaccinating their kids. A fourfold increase. This has also been, a, there's been a simultaneous 15-point increase, 70% in 2019, 55% in 2024, in the proportion of Canadians who support mandatory vaccination in schools. So that's good to see that drop quite a bit. A policy in place in Ontario and New Brunswick only so far. Opposition to this idea has risen correspondingly from one quarter, 24%, to closer to two and five, 38%. <clears throat> so there's more key findings here. More than half the men between 35 and 54, so 56%, are either anti vax or vax skeptics. So get that. More than half of men between 35 and 54 are either anti-vax or vax skeptics. The highest number among all age and gender combinations. Comparatively, one in five women, over 54, express these views. One third of men under 55 are unsure or against vaccinating a child. What do you think so far? Is this surprising you at all? Yeah. Ontario residents are most supportive of the vaccine mandates for children in schools, which is weird because that's the province that has it. While well, Albertans, so get this, what do you think the common, what's what's common about this? While well, Albertans, 48%, and Quebecers, 45%, are least receptive. What do you mean? What's there, common? Well, there's a bunch of things in this these surveys where Alberta and Quebec are the least receptive of. And that's well, funny. They don't like the federal government. <laughs> They're the two provinces that want to split off, right? So it kind of confirms that in a way, in a weird way. Three in 10 Canadians express skepticism about the science of vaccines. Vaccines, While one in three say they're worthy about, they worry about the risk of significant side effects. So. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Crazy. crazy. But, That's but crazy. now, I mean, now, uh, let's see here. I'll show you an example of some disappointments kind of so this is this is a clip of um it looks like a, a diagonal member here he's uh he got the opportunity to tell CSIS, rcmp and dominic cardi exactly what he thought of them today it was fun to put the spot put them on the spot and show their hypocrisy right so i'm going to play this um and and i just want you to just want you to hear something L listen for something from the people my question is pretty simple. It's less about China and more about you guys. Um, who are you guys that we need to trust? Dominic just said Russian disinformation is a thing that we need to fear. ISIS and RCMP are two of the most corrupt organizations in this country. Yes. Yeah. They have investigated, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars investigating pastors who have church in the woods uh, when there is corruption with China going on in, in this country. So he says, uh, like, you know, CSIS and RCMP are two of the most corrupt and everybody claps, right? So, so far, so good. Despicable. And I literally consider Dominic Cardi to be one of the top five worst politicians in this country while standing on the stage telling us that China is working with poison 
he demanded that our kids inject themselves with an untested poison just to play sports. So who are you guys? That's the bet, man. The audio is terrible. That's too bad. Yeah. So he says basically, well, he stood there and told everybody to they had to vaccinate their kids with an untested, you know, and uh, everybody starts booing. All of a sudden, who are you? People commenting. Because he says that about the un- I think about- they're going alongside him, aren't they? No, uh, yeah. about an untested experiment. Yeah. I tell you, boy, I'm an open book. You ask me any question about my life, my background, what I spent my time doing since I've been a kid. I value the life that I have as a Canadian, able to live in freedom that most people can't breathe up. And as an adult, I've done my best to try and. Well, unfortunately, Dominic's whole answer got cut off there. Um, but uh, after he was done telling me he's a Canadian, um, he went on to tell me that I was a uh, I was spreading Russian disinformation. Now, going into this event, I fully knew what the answer to the question was going to be. That was the intended question that I I had for them, um, and I knew that they were they were just going to bypass it and not actually answer it. The RCMP and CSIS guys didn't even acknowledge it, um, but. That was my intent. My intent was to show who they are. They said the WEF was good. They said that there was Russian disinformation about vaccines and and and, and what's going on with Israel. Uh, they said that the Rothschilds were good for crying out loud. Like these are not good people. Um, you know, the the few boos boos that I got were well uh, well drowned out by the the cheers. There didn't bother me in the slightest. All the lovely little old ladies who came up afterwards and shook my hand and thanked me because they said that they've been wondering the same thing. Um, that was was plenty for me uh, to realize that that was the question that needed to be asked. So, I mean, I don't know. The booze bugged me because it's like as soon as he talked about like, experimental procedures, everybody got all upset, you know. But he said it was far outweighed by the... Yeah, I know. That's yeah. just, him. just him. So, Which is kind of what I f- thought I heard, too. Like, I think even that person was talking to the person on stage, not to him. No, no. no. But anyways. You say that with such authority. Yeah, well, because that's just super, super. I, that's the, the vibe I got from it was total. Just people, as soon as that topic came up, everybody got all all triggered. But he said that didn't happen. Yeah, that's fine. I don't believe he just. He's just, you know. He said he just got a couple of boos. Yeah, we heard the boos. But we have a serious problem here in British Columbia. So this is this is Billboard Chris. Did you see this one? No, no, BC is lost though. So. so he's he's so this is super interesting. And and man, I went f- through this so many times to try and pick out a good clip because Rebel News did a segment on it, but they missed this whole part of it. So but again, it's the people. I want you to pay pay attention to the people here a little bit. So well it's Chris BC, goes, they're idiots. Chris goes pretty hard. No, you can't just start yeah, I did just did. They don't start slagging one part of the country or another. We're trying to know. we're trying to Bring more info to all of Canada here. Well, BC, if you're in BC, Canada. here's the info I got for you. Move fucking east. <laughs> ah. Kevin Falcon is the reader of leader of uh, British Columbia's official opposition party, BC United. He's also the father of two girls, 12 and 14. Of all the people in this province who should be condemning gender ideology, the abuse. So anyways, we're going to listen to Chris for a bit. Where this NDP government, they might as well call themselves the trans party. They push this so hard. And on the right, we have two parties who are now splitting the vote. You're currently projected to win four seats. The Conservative Party is projected to win six. The NDP are guaranteed a majority. They're projected to win 81. You don't speak up enough about these cultural issues. There are many parents in the room who know exactly what I'm talking about. Just down the street at Langley Fine Arts School, I met with two parents last year where their daughter had been indoctrinated to believe she was a boy and the school hid this from them. Three times they asked the school if something was going on because they could see their daughter's mental health spiraling downwards. Three times they were lied to. Her three children at that school estimate that 45 girls in middle school are identifying as boys or as non-binary, and they're hiding this from the parents. So, these cultural issues have split the right in British Columbia. What do you plan on doing about gender ideology in schools What do you plan on doing medically so that we stop sterilizing children, a majority of whom have autism, many of whom are in state care, 
Dr. Wallace Wong, who works for the Ministry of Children and Families, says he's personally transitioning more than 500 children in state care. 52% of the, these kids in Canada are Indigenous. So what are we going to do about this ideology in schools, this medical abuse, and what are we going to do to unite the right so we don't get these communists in the NDP in power for four or eight more years? So, you know, he's got a couple of people clapping for him there. Some people are, you know, the guy, I, this audio is terrible. You can't even hear the, that's why I was going back and forth with the Rebel News one, but they only clipped the political aspect of it. They didn't clip any of the trans stuff. So he he basically doesn't answer the question. He answers the political stuff in there. So Chris gets he does Chris does get a little bit, uh, you know he 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 interrupts him and. Countries in the world are putting a stop to this. In England, the National Health Service today. <laughs> so people are already getting fed up with Chris, right? Sit down. <laughs> They're already heckling him from the crowd, and this is like this is conservatives in BC. That no more children will will, will be getting puberty blockers but you're silent on it and you're, you're doing, you have all these great plans and these great projects, but it's all for nothing because you're going to get four seats. So start talking about the issues that matter to parents. As long as you remain split. Yeah, someone needs to be, someone needs to be. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it, but the, he, he says that basically Chris's language, he has to calm down in the language, that his tone is not good. And everybody claps. Like, they cannot handle Chris getting up and saying this stuff. He's like, you, you can't be saying those things almost. Like, it's, it's, it's so delicate that everybody's, um, I, don't know, I should have had the timestamp of when they were all clapping it, but it's just, it was just kind of sad. It's like, they, they just can't even, like, handle a little bit of a debate here between on this topic, to right? Today. To that teaching children that they're born wrong. Yeah. Anyways, I won't. I, won't yeah, I want to see the clapping part because I want to see when they clap. No one's attacking anyone. We shouldn't be teaching children. We shouldn't be teaching children that, children one old that they're man. born you think wrong. Twenty-four states in the U.S. Oh, yeah. have already put a stop you to this. To fight Six them. countries in the world are putting a stop to this. In England, the National Health Service today said that no more children will, will, will be getting puberty blockers, but you're silent on it. And you're, you're doing, you have all these great plans and these great projects, but it's all for nothing because you're going to get four seats. So start talking about the issues that matter to parents. Well, thank you, I appreciate that, but I will tell you this, Chris, while you're wrong about the number of seats, you're wrong We'll see. Anyway, he's wrong about the number of seats. He's probably No, right. I mean, they... They're like, sit down. You know, we've heard enough. You made your point. <laughs> so then he gets up. What well, uh, you can see that at the end here, maybe he gets up and. <laughs> Unfortunately, again for the audio people, we just can't hear this guy talking. But you're gonna get to hear Chris leave uh, and make a disturbance again. <laughs> Because they really, he really won't answer it, right? I mean, that's this is what's happening here. They they can't address these issues. They cannot talk about them. So what are you going to do to get gender ideology out of schools and stop this child abuse? You don't answer the question. And you don't answer the question. What a joke. You can all clap all you want. They're getting nothing accomplished. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You didn't answer my question. Go run for office then. You've got all the answers. Run for office and you'll see how you do. I'm far more effective exposing people like you who will do nothing about this child abuse. So I'll get tens of thousands of votes going to the guys who will do something about it. It's time for you to wake up. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, I mean, just disappointing that. I mean, He's, he's being a bit of an ass, but I mean, kind of just disappointing how everybody jumps on him and they're like, oh yeah, you can't speak that way. Like the, I, w I wish I didn't fast forward and pass the part where they're all sort of clapping when, when he says, oh, you know, you got to watch your language. You got to watch your language about that stuff. And he wasn't even saying anything bad. Like, it's not well, like he was say saying trans. Trans. You can't. That's a bad word. Yeah. You can't say cutting out the womb. That was like, that's bad. 
Well, there's no such thing as a conservative in BC. You know, it's, it's, I don't know what it is. It's like, uh, it's like California, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably because California and BC both had like, you couldn't move there back in the day unless you had a bunch of money. I don't know. Dude, I'm telling you, you couldn't, you needed money to go east of Alberta, west of Alberta. There was like a set amount of money that you had to prove that you had in your bank account. California, the same way. How long ago are you talking about? Oh, a long, long, long time ago. Like not now, but you know, now it's, well, BC is still expensive to live in. Jesus, but with the carbon taxes and everything else, I can't imagine what the total tax bill would be for the year. But no, that was like when we were settling, you know? Yeah, right. But right. all that stuff has, you know, those people have kids and kids, and you get some settling here and there. And through these, but clearly, dude, there's something to the, uh, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, the, uh, ideology. There's something to the stereotypes. There's something to it. The people that came to Alberta ended up a certain way and were still kind of a certain way. And the people in Quebec ended up a certain way and they're still kind of a certain way. And the people in BC, you know, there's something going on. Is I don't think it's because of the prairies that turns Albertans into conservatives. It's just because a bunch of conservative people moved here and lived here, you know, 150 years ago. And they it just sort of plays itself out from there. And that it, it's got roots in that sense and it can still flip in the other direction eventually. And it does happens all the time. There's different examples of that, but there's still something to those um, settlement stereotypes. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Like it's still a bunch of French people in uh, Southern Manitoba, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ukrainians in Saskatchewan, a lot of Ukrainians here, it seems. Bunch of bunch of old churches. Oh yeah, there's tons of Ukrainians. Why, uh, why am do I? you uh, do you know what the guess what the uh, consultant bill's up to now? Oh no, no. Okay, let's talk about that after this, okay? Right. <clears throat> because because this has something to do with that, I believe. So this is from Jessica Rose. They're going they're going for your private medical data, and they're not going to ask you first. So this is Canada again. Can Canadians be apprised? So. <clears throat> Think about it like this. They can deem you sick or mentally unfit just by wanting to do so and then prevent you from being able to board a plane or see your family or get a job. So I'm gonna, just going to slide over to this report here from Rebel News. Um, I'll let you know what, what you wonder, what you think about this. Mary Ugolini here with Rebel <clears throat> News. And in recent weeks, the government of Canada has, has put out a call to hire somebody to track and trace the medical records of all Canadians. In a publication put out on March the 6th, Health Canada put out a call for a supplier to help what they call strengthen public health surveillance through primary care insights. The description reads, the adoption of electronic medical record EMR systems in Canadian primary care settings is widespread and their potential benefits for disease surveillance are well acknowledged. Pan-Canadian primary care EMR data is recognized as valuable for federal public health surveillance programs. The recently released Pan-Canadian Health Data Strategy emphasizes the importance of primary care research moving towards real-time data sharing and person-centric data. But what exactly is the Pan-Canadian Health Data Strategy? Well, it was born out of the COVID-19 pandemic naturally. And according to the Public Health Agency of Canada, which runs and delivers this strategy, COVID-19 has highlighted issues that make it a challenge to collect, share, and use health data for the benefit of Canadians. Health data includes public health, health systems, and population health data. The strategy is run by an expert advisory group and is chaired by Dr. Vivek Goel in combination with 17 members. The latest Health Data Strategy 2022 report shares that the inability to integrate data in real time across hospitals, primary care, testing, vaccination, and genomics, among others, impair insights to measure the efficacy of vaccines, track the emergence of variants of concern, and mount efforts to address health inequalities. What do you think? 
Health inequalities. Yeah, health inequalities and vaccines and new variants. I, you know, I mean, of course, you know, it would be nice if we had all our data in one place that people could actually access it who needed to. But I mean, I just don't trust them at wait, all. No, wait, wait. Who needs to access it? Me, me. Like I should have it maybe printed out for myself. Maybe and I can carry it to my next appointment or something. I don't know. There's got to be a got to be a way to do it where people like the government don't they get to look it. in on that. They have it already. Well, what are they? What are, what is this for then? Have you ever gone to the doctor and, well, this is something a lot more sinister than that. That's what I mean. But like, you know, if you go to the doctor someplace, they always kind of got your history. You know what it is? It's because the provinces have that, I think. You have a file. So That's right. The provinces have that. That's a hundred percent. I've gone to the Canadian. doctor in Ontario before and they didn't have that. Yeah. So now it's pan-Canadian, right? So they don't want you going to the next province over. I wonder if I still have a warrant in Ontario. But is this um is this that could affect my ability to run for office one day? But they're going they're going mm -hmm. after you know they're going to uh oh here here's one this the safe restart agreement federal investment of more than nineteen billion to help provinces and territories safely restart their economies and make our country more resilient to possible future surges in cases of COVID nineteen I mean they're going back now this is like what happened back then right nineteen billion. 19,000 million, I should say. So is that not the, con the consultants obviously can't give them advice on how to do this or can't handle that. They've got to spend 17 billion on consultants and they still don't get this out of it. I don't, uh, but no, no, 21 billion. They're up to 21 billion. Oh, really? So they're still doing it every year? $1,400 per Canadian family in 2023. What? Spent on consultants. Fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that's what twenty-one billion is, and we spent twelve billion to Ukraine, so that's seven hundred dollars per Canadian family. So this You're is up what to I'm talking 2, about. Twenty-one hundred. This is what I'm talking about, and we're arguing over a carbon tax when we spent twenty-one hundred each. Most well, the carbon people. tax is not little either. I mean, that's another twenty-one hundred, dude. That's another three, four thousand. The, the carbon tax is bigger. This is the carbon tax is bigger than those. That's why we're upset. Well. Yeah, but we don't even know about do the think? other one. We do don't even think? know about the other ones. They're not even a tax. They're not even tax, I guess, right? They're just they're just coming out of your general taxes or whatever. Well, they're kind of a tax. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's hidden, right? So they're they're arguing over this tax to save the planet, and meanwhile they're 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 just raping us for all these other things that they're not even telling us about. Well, they're telling us just no one's listening. Because we know oh, they're not. They don't tell us about the. Are you telling me that the mainstream media and then, well, maybe the one article talked about the thing, but who's telling us about the, the consulting fees? The government? Oh, well, the, well, yeah, the government. Because all the conservatives are talking about it all the time. Just the mainstream media is not talking about it. <sighs> that's what I mean. This is a, the real problem with not having the media. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing this Canadian content for, is because. You probably get us into trouble again because every time we feel like a calling to help out, we get ourselves into trouble and it causes money. And but you know, there's a real problem right now in Canada with no news other than like you see this shit where Justin just says the same thing over and over again and it's a lie and it doesn't make sense. You think, ha, how could you get away with that? Well, because the news won't say nothing. So, but YouTube's taken over that space in a lot of ways. And uh you know, we're trying to be a part of that, trying to just highlight it. You know, it's weird because I wouldn't consider myself a conservative. I think most of them are dingbats, too. I mean, I was watching a video of my one chick today, and she was just saying stuff that your gas is going to go up 23%. I'm like, no, that's not what. I, I know. How did you ever get fucking elected? No, but dude, I know. And this is what I'm going to like. We're doing a show tomorrow with a bunch of uh, other podcasters. And I mean, I feel like. The independent media is going to hold the conservatives to account, you know, not like the not like the mainstream media will do to the liberals, but you know, I I think we would hold them. We to will account. for sure because they're all fascists. Uh, do you want to swing over to the Jew guy quick? Did you have you seen him at all? The the MP. Yeah. Yeah, well, sure. We should talk about it. Yeah. You saw the cartoon, right? Everyone's freaking oh. out about that too. That's the no, I didn't know. I didn't so know that, that that little vampire thing that just came up on the screen. That's the Montreal uh, 
know, the press or whatever came out with Netanyahu as a vampire. And everyone freaked the fuck out, dude. Parliament had to uh, what? come out and like... Uh, Why? When you like... Uh, Canceling vampires now? It's uh, super anti-Semitic. It's uh, reminiscent of the 1930s. What? Yeah, yeah. They had to come out and what's it called when you like say something's terrible officially? Excoriated? Yeah, well, the, yeah, that. You know, they had to come out and officially on the record talk about how terrible this was. Anyway, that's that picture I was showing. Uh, so let's go to Fury, right? House father. House father, the, the Zionist Jew. Uh, I think he's French, too. I, 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 right now, I've got to reflect on last night's vote. It was a very hard time for me, last night's vote, what happened. Um, I, I will be like very honest. Gay, yeah. it, I, I felt uh, <laughs> that the message that I put through about how disturbing the original motion was, um, you know, clearly didn't prevail. And whenever you don't prevail, all the political battles, you have battles that you win and battles you use, you lose. Um, that was a difficult one to lose. You, you seemed really upset about the last I think when you bring forward an amendment five minutes before the end of debate and nobody has a chance to debate it, so nobody has actually seen it or reviewed it, it's bad parliamentary form. I think parliamentarians have a right to know and understand what they're voting on. In all cases, whatever party does it, and I've tried to maintain a balanced view throughout, and I still I felt that wasn't correct parliamentary as a parliamentarian. Do you feel like you can stay in the Liberal caucus? Uh, look again, right now I am reflecting on what happened yesterday, and when I have an announcement on how I've ended my reflection, which could be whenever, uh, I'll let's certainly let you know. There's what did happen yesterday? What is your assessment of what happened? Do you want to keep going, or I mean, he kind of added there by saying he might go. This guy's basically saying he might go to the Conservatives. So the yeah, part, of, part of the reason I bring this up is there's a bunch of liberals that might that know they're not going to get elected in the next election. And some of them already got their pensions and they're older, you know, and they might be just like, do I really need to sit in here and get my ass kicked for another 18 months? Or, you know, can I just because I think it's. uh I could be wrong about this, but I think it's like a secret vote, you know? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you could have, now I don't know that. Maybe Google that and see if that's true while I'm yapping. If the non, it'd be a non confidence vote in parliament. Okay. Yeah, but secret or not, I mean, if you're like, oh man, you could be looking at this as literally a chance to get out the door early. So this is my one contention is you got a bunch of liberals who could be looking at this as they know they're out. And they could be looking at it as a chance to get out of the door 18 months early and not have to keep doing this and living in Ottawa and blah, blah, blah. And the NDP is sliding fast. They just introduced all this new stuff. And they're still sliding. And it, it's because they're so hitched to the liberals right now that they're losing the popularity that they should be gaining on Justin's downfall. They're also losing. So it's a unique opportunity for them to maybe stop the bleeding. And in some ways, I think this calling of election by Pierre is almost like a, a nudge to them to be like, hey, this is your chance to not lose everything. Because, the, I mean, the, I'll pull up a poll here in a second that shows how bad the liberals have tanked in the last six months, and it's kind of unprecedented. And it's, it's hard to think that it's not by design, but then you look at these people – that are running the place and none of them have any like level of expertise that we should have thought that they had any business running the place. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. alarm bells should have been going off like seven years ago. Like, but we were all blissfully ignorant. Yeah, exactly. Cause now it's affecting us personally. Now it's, oh, yeah. this is now the effect of, it's like having a bad boss. Yeah. Eventually it gets to you, you know? Yeah. In Canada, a non-confidence vote is typically conducted through a process called a motion of non-confidence or a motion of censure. Whether the vote is secret or not depends on the specific rules and procedures of the legislative body in which the vote is taking place. In the federal parliament of Canada, for example, votes are generally not secret. Members of parliament, MPs, cast their votes openly either by standing up to be counted or by electronic means. 
This transparency allows constituents to see how the representatives are voting on important matters. However, in some provincial legislators or other government bodies within Canada, the rules may vary, and secret ballots could be used for certain types of votes. It ultimately depends on the rules established by the particular legislative body in question. So no, not secret. But so the, so I, I could argue a third thing, that even if you're a liberal that don't want out right now, you might be a liberal that this is your chance to maybe get reelected. Because Canadians have had it with Trudeau and the carbon tax. I mean, branding is a carbon tax election is kind of clever. And again, I'm not saying I trust the liberals, but I'd like to press the pause button for a couple of years so that we can regroup. Because I feel like we've been in free fall since COVID. And we kind of went into COVID thinking laughing and joking and thinking it was like the mock thing. Remember, I wrote, you know, it was like the trial run. And, you know, here we are still skidding. And they told us they were going to go after climate change. And when and they, they said it and everybody was just like, no, no, no. And now they really are going hard in the paint on climate change. And people, that's probably what people in the back of their head, they're like, oh, my God, we were warned about this. All right. So let's, well, here's a quick thing on kind of what you just did. But uh, at the federal government, six governments that lost non-confident votes, 1926, 63, Pierre Trudeau in 1974, Clark in 79, Paul Martin in 2005, and Stephen Harper's in 2011. Stephen Harper won a majority government after his, though. But anyway, uh, in 2000, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, let's go down here. In 2011, the opposition parties held the prime minister in contempt of parliament in 156 to 145 vote for failing to disclose the full financial details of his tough on crime legislation, corporate tax cuts, and plans to purchase fighter jets. It triggered an elections, and the conservatives won a uh, majority government. So that kind of backfired. In 2005, a North confidence motion was brought down. Paul brought down Paul Martin's liberal government. A federal election was held months later, and Harper's conservatives won and stayed in power until 2015. So let's jump over to this one real quick. I'll show you this. This is to get some people up to speed. So what we're looking at is basically, you know, right. Oh, that is really right interesting. around here, which is going to say, you know, these one, two, three, four, five. Oh, those are every two months. These lines are every two months. Go back to 2022, even. Like in yeah, red, and it's up there, yeah. red up a bit. And they're kind of anchored in for like all of 2022. It's kind of up and down and close, you know. And then around halfway through 2023, um, you know, the conservatives go up considerably at, at seemingly all at the liberals expense yeah that's a great map there um what can you go back further than 2023 can you do like three or four years i, I could but i don't have that handy you know i yeah. could maybe have that ready for next time no 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 it's okay it's probably going to be the same it's probably going to be a line going all the way. canada you know, I mean, places like Alberta probably haven't changed. But here's let's look at British Columbia. Even in British Columbia, uh, the conservatives are up. So, at the expense of both parties, you can see the NDP influence there. That it's taken which, a which, hit. Which what I don't understand about Canadian politics is how the NDP is is up for like basically what Chris was saying there. They're up for 80, 80 seats or whatever. Does that is it eighty? And then the conservatives split, and they get hardly any. Because they're not neither can is neither conservative party tied to the the federal, but the NDP is. Like, how can how does that? No, work? no, they're, they're not tied together either. It's like they're provincial. The and they're, they're not either. No, but they're branded the same. I mean, they, yeah, they, just the same. You know, as maybe they feel they, the same. they're a lot more united. I mean, the liberals too. You've got a liberal, a liberal premier. You know, which would be the equivalent of a governor in some ways, and in Newfoundland going against the liberal government, the federal government, because they're two different governments from the same party, I guess. Polymathing, the ultimate troll in the chat here, says that it looks like a retarded pride flag. So here's the sort of seat listings, 338 total. You get 170. Gives you the uh, the majority. Um so there's a, I thought this showed that, oh yeah, this is the total. So right now the Liberals have 156, the Conservatives have 118, the Bloc de Québécois has 32, the NDP 25, Green Party 2, Independence 3. 
so if you add the 32, because it looks like the block will probably go with Trudeau or go with uh, Pierre, gets you up to 150 to 156. I think the Greens and the Independent are looking at an opportunity at the Liberal free fall as being an opportunity to gain some more seats for themselves. So I see no reason why they wouldn't go against it. So that gets you up to 155 to 156. So the NDP really kind of swings it. And they've got this supply and confidence deal, which means in matters of confidence, like a no confidence vote, that they will support the liberals but that's getting pricey well they they can't they can't they're they're further left than the liberals i mean they can't just flip-flop like they're they're not like a swing thing because they're they're supposed to be the working class party and the working class is fucking drowning so at some point you got to decide are you socialists or are you for the working people are you, are you the liberals? Are you it's the social liberals? The same thing. It's supposed to be no, the same. they're not supposed to be the same thing. The liberals are supposed to be the socialists, and the NDP are supposed to be the working class people. Like well, labor almost, traditionally. Labor, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not anymore. Look at BC. Liberals 15, CPC 13, and NDP 13. That's tight there, right? 42 for total. Well, this is right now. This is right now. This is the current seating. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. So all of a sudden, if you've got it, what I'm what I'm getting down to is you, it comes down to like 15 or 20 people in the NDP or in the Liberal Party that don't vote down party lines. And I would say that there's no chance of that happening, but it seems to be like that's been happening a lot more lately than ever in some ways, you know? Yeah. Well, can I can I read something that's sort of like it's the sort of proving that we're at a tipping point right now? Where is it tipping to? Uh, to well, to the right, everywhere, right? I mean, unfortunately, not that we even want to see like right or left, because I don't think we buy in either of them. But, but David Haskell, a professor at the Faculty of Liberal Arts at Wilfrid Laurier University, has published a paper on the effects of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Right, so the DEI training, arguing that pervasive DEI is teaching Canadians to perceive hate where it doesn't necessarily exist. We are moving outside of objective reality to subjective perception. Mr. Haskell says he's not the only one talking about how subjective discrimination has become. At the University of Melbourne, psychologist Nick Nick Haslam has coined the term concept creep, reflecting an ever-increasing sensitivity to harm. Concept creep runs the risk of pathologizing everyday experience and encouraging a sense of virtuous but impotent victimhood. Increasingly, we're moving away from very clear definitions of hate, as we've seen in the criminal code section 318 and 319, which were fairly rigorous, he said. And we're now moving into the realm of subjectivity, where hate is anything that offends progressive or liberal sensibilities. Mr. Haskell said more objective measures show racism is decreasing. So we're, you know, it's just more proof that people are starting to to come forward and talk about this a little bit more openly that it's not, you know, all cut and dry. So before we uh, wrap up and head over to the funds part, the, uh, the band part, the stuff we can't do on YouTube for sure. We can't do it on YouTube. We can't do it in a lot of places. So, you know, if you want to check that out, you guys head over to grimericaoutlaw.ca. There's a bunch of different ways you can sign up there, video, audio, however you want to do it and get access to the second half. Cause if we do it here, we'll just get canceled. You know, that's no fun for anybody, especially us. So, GreatAmericaOutlaw.ca, guys, check that out. Um, oh, what was I going to say? I thought I had one more thing to go on with that. You got anything else? About the new, about the new, uh, the new show or the links or the new Substack page. Well, we do have a new YouTube channel. If people want to check that out, uh, Outlawed Canadians, where we'll slowly start to branch off these uh streams to kind of separate them out from the Grime America thing in some way again because you know it's not really the same content. Grime America is fully demonetized. So anyway, grimericaoutlaw.ca if you guys want to keep going, we're getting in stuff we can't talk about on YouTube. I've got a bunch of stuff to put in the in away for next year. Uh for next, next week next week too. Like uh and a bunch of great stuff for the second half. Obviously some some jibbity jab stuff. And, uh, man, I thought I had 
that other link here too, but I can't seem to find it. But I, I got like a thing for next week on how much money Ottawa is giving the World Economic Forum. Nice, yeah. nice, yeah. We got like that. That. I got a report on the effects of COVID measures for the second half. So, oh, I like that too. Yeah, I saw that coming through. That they, it was a, it was a disaster. Disaster. So before that's what I was going to say. Is before we do that, uh, there any predictions? I mean, I don't know what time the vote is, but they're going to vote tomorrow on the government. And it's like, like I say, it's like an 80% chance that it's nothing's going to change, but there's a chance and there hasn't been a chance of anything for a long, long time. So, I mean, there's like a, a chance of blown in the wind, you know, a non nothing chance that Trudeau could be resigning this week. Just would that be close enough to get kudos on my prediction? It's pretty close. Yeah. I mean, 10 days, 11 days off. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but if it doesn't happen tomorrow, it's pretty much out the window. Yeah. But if they, if it, so here's another question. So, say they do the non confidence, but it takes them a few days to, is the non confidence enough to, to win the prediction? Yeah, maybe. I would no. say, right? Yeah, it's pretty close. It's like a resignation, but not by his choice. Yeah. So, this is it, people. I mean, this is, I, you know. Oh, yeah, I'll, definitely. No, I think that would be a win. For sure, I will, I, I'm not a win, but it's like uh, better than a tie. I would say like a eight out of ten instead of ten out of ten because I was a yeah. week and a half late. Yeah, but they had one of those weeks off, so he couldn't Ooh. even have done it for one of them. So I should have got a stay. Anyway, uh, you can start off the second half. I'll shut down the streams. We'll be back next week. We'll be back tomorrow actually because we're doing a Canadian podcast convergence. With a bunch of other cool Canadian shows, Clyde do something. Uh, maybe Matthew Eric, the Freedom Convo podcast. What else? I shouldn't have started. Oh yeah, you shouldn't start saying it. Yeah, I mean we've got uh, Gray Matter on, and um, now you're gonna stump me too. Um, I'll get to it right here. Jason Levine, uh, Truth Seeker, Schmidt House, Limina, Sheldon, Sheldon Yakachuk. Lip, maybe Odessa, but I don't think she can make it. Tease from up north. So, yeah, it's going to be a good one. A couple diagonal on people. Gonna maybe, be maybe, maybe Jeremy. Check it out, guys. Uh, check it out tomorrow, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? An hour early. Uh, 6 o'clock Mountain Time. 5 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. And this is what we have. Yeah, and this is what we have to look forward to in Canada. I mean, in the UK, 3,000 people in Britain were arrested for... People don't even think this is real, but... 3,000 people in Britain were arrested for comments that they made on social media. This one guy is arrested for, for stickers, for making far-right stickers. So I'm just going to play a quick clip to get us out. So I have far-right stickers in my truck. Um, we've got to head inside now to find out my fate. So uh, hopefully we'll see you on the other side. So uh, have a good one. <laughs> So Sam Mealy has been sentenced to two years in custody. Um, the probation report recommended in, in custody. That he was no risk to the public, and that there was no likelihood of reoffending over the next couple of years. Uh, the probation report recommended that he get a community order, which would mean a certain amount of un hours of unpaid work. However, the judge said that he needed to have uh, an immediate custodial sentence because it acted as a deterrent to other people so basically i'm sending sam to prison because i want to deter other people from doing this um so he's got two years in custody worst case scenario he will serve around 12 months of that in custody however if everything goes in his favor he could be out in potentially around eight months um because he is like the bottom category of his crime um, it's likely that he will go to a category D prison, which will mean that he will get um, day release so that he'll be able to be out and about during the day anyway. Um, but obviously that won't be for a few months. So... <laughs> go to a day release prison for stickers. I mean... You laugh, dude, but you're probably going. I mean, if it's Sam, coming east to west, you'll go before me. Sam... Sam Melia was in charge of an online collection of downloadable stickers that contained anti-immigration messages for activists of the 100 Handers group. 
Oh boy, this does sound kind of wild. Have you fact checked this? Is this guy like a, uh, well, this a is from, actual extremist? Well, this is from uh, this is from. Um, we see some of the G, G. Edward Griffin's uh, news. He's news. Need you need to know news. I keep an eye on G. Edward Griffin stuff. Next time, get the stickers around him. Make sure they're not like kill all Jews or something like that. Okay, yeah. here we go. The stickers reportedly contain slogans such as "We will be a minority in our homeland by 2066." Mass immigration is white genocide. Intolerance is a virtue. They seek conquest, not asylum. Diversity, designed to fail, built to replace. Reject white guilt. It's okay to be white. Stop anti-white rape gangs and love your nation. So That all sounds pretty tame. Jail for all that? Jesus. I'm supposed to go to England. Should I not go? You're gonna, you might as well. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to understand them. She had quite Would the they heart. arrest me like just for crimes abroad for stuff I no, did here. I don't, I don't no, right? No, are, they, are you kidding me? You could just sail in and you know show up at the beach in front of the cliffs of Dover and get let in the way things are going. Should I do that? Yeah. Should I try and illegally enter England? Yeah, just do the boat boat across the water and just walk right up on the shore and say, yeah, hey, yeah, some yeah, free yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'll hold up a picture of the Queen and start speaking her good way. <laughs> all right you can start the second half go i thought that was already oh no well no. I, I thought it was too i was half i was like half shut down and then you're like to end the show so i didn't i stopped shutting well, shit down well i thought you're i thought that that was supposed to be while you shut everything down there was a clip well, I'm, shutting it down now. I'm shutting it down now thanks everybody this is uh the gender agenda Agenda. Um, Rachel McLean. See agenda. This is the energy that is needed.